Global South Studies refers to an interdisciplinary field that focuses on the political, economic, cultural, and historical contexts of the Global South, a term used to describe regions in Africa, Latin America, Asia, and the Pacific that have been historically marginalized or exploited by colonialism, imperialism, and global capitalism. This field critically examines the legacies of colonialism, the impacts of globalization, and the struggles for decolonization, social justice, and self-determination in these regions. Key themes within Global South Studies include Post-colonialism Analyzes the lingering effects of colonial rule on nations in the Global South, exploring how these regions negotiate their identities, economies, and politics in the post-independence era. Development and Underdevelopment Investigates the disparities in economic growth between the Global North and South, often highlighting how global power structures perpetuate inequalities. Globalization examines how the Global South is integrated into global economic systems, frequently critiquing the unequal exchanges and exploitation by multinational corporations and global institutions. Resistance and Social Movements focuses on the political struggles and social movements in the Global South advocating for autonomy, land rights, labor rights, gender equality, and environmental justice. Climate Justice explores how climate change disproportionately affects the Global South, linking environmental issues to historical processes of extraction and exploitation by the Global North. Cultural Expressions studies literature, art, film, and other forms of cultural production from the Global South, offering alternative perspectives and narratives that challenge dominant global discourses. Scholars in Global South studies often draw from diverse theoretical frameworks, including post-colonial theory, decolonial theory, Marxism, feminism, and environmental studies. This field critically engages with questions of global inequality, and it advocates for more equitable and inclusive global relations. In the context of English literature, the Global South Studies framework brings new perspectives to the study of literature produced by or about the regions of the Global South. It involves analyzing how literature from the Global South responds to themes of colonialism, post-colonialism, globalization, and cultural identity. Here's an exploration of its origin, history, evolution, key concepts, examples, features, pioneering figures, texts, contributions, and impact. Origin and History Origin, the term, Global South, gained prominence in the late 20th century as a way to describe regions that had been economically, politically, and socially marginalized by Western imperial powers. In literary studies, it arose from the need to expand beyond Eurocentric narratives and focus on voices from formerly colonized regions, addressing colonial legacies, resistance, and cultural survival. History Global South studies in English literature stems from post-colonial studies, which emerged after the decolonization period 1940s-1960s. Writers from Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, and Latin America began to articulate their own histories, cultures, and experiences challenging dominant Western discourses. The term, Global South, became common as scholars sought to move away from binary terms like, Third World, or, Developing Countries. Evolution Early postcolonialism. In the 1960s and 1970s, postcolonial literary criticism began with figures like Edward Said and his influential work Orientalism, 1978, which critiqued how Western literature represented the East in exotic and subjugated terms. Writers like Chinua Achebe, Things Fall Apart, 1958, and Ngugi Wationgo, Decolonizing the Mind, 1986, contributed to this early movement. Shift to Global South. By the 1990s and 2000s, Global South Studies began to take shape as a broader, more inclusive framework. It emphasized not only the colonial and post-colonial experience but also contemporary issues of globalization, migration, neoliberalism, and environmental justice, which impacted the Global South differently from the Global North. Concept and Definition Concept. In literature, Global South Studies focuses on examining how writers from Africa, Latin America, Asia, and the Pacific engage with themes of colonialism, exploitation, identity, and resilience. It includes both writing produced in English by postcolonial or diasporic writers and works translated into English. Definition. Global South Studies in English Literature is the critical examination of literary works from or about regions historically colonized or marginalized, with an emphasis on themes of decolonization, global inequality, cultural identity, and resistance. 
It seeks to decentralize Western literary canons and introduce diverse global narratives. Examples of key texts. Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe, Nigeria, a seminal novel that explores the effects of British colonialism on African identity and tradition. Midnight's Children by Salman Rushdie, India, a Booker Prize-winning novel reflecting post-colonial India's political upheavals through magical realism. Season of Migration to the North by Tayeb Salat, Sudan, a novel that addresses the psychological impacts of colonization and the West's cultural dominance. Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Rhys Dominica, a prequel to Jane Eyre, giving voice to a silenced Caribbean woman, reshaping the colonial narrative. Features of Global South Literature Decolonization, a major focus on the struggle for independence and cultural survival in formerly colonized regions. Identity and Diaspora, themes of migration, displacement, and identity, especially for diasporic communities. Globalization, critiques of economic and cultural global systems that disproportionately affect the global south. Environmentalism, addressing the impact of environmental degradation, especially in the context of climate change and resource exploitation in the global south. Resistance, Literature often functions as a form of resistance to Western dominance, articulating alternative histories and realities. Pioneering figures. Chinua Achebe, Nigeria, his works, including Things Fall Apart, are foundational to post-colonial literature. Ngugi Wa Tiongo, Kenya, advocates for writing in indigenous languages and critiques colonial education systems. Salman Rushdie, India, UK, known for works that blend magical realism with post-colonial concerns. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Colombia, a major figure in Latin American literature, especially for his magical realist work 100 Years of Solitude. Toni Morrison, USA, although American, Morrison's work in Beloved examines the African-American experience as part of the broader Global South narrative of slavery and colonization. Contributions to English Literature Diversification of Canon Global South literature has expanded the literary canon, bringing in voices from diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds. Postcolonial critique. It offers critical insights into the ongoing effects of colonization, exploring cultural hybridity, the negotiation of identity, and resistance against imperialism. Magical realism. Writers like Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Salman Rushdie popularized magical realism, blending the fantastical with political and social commentary. Cultural Reclamation. Global South writers reclaim indigenous languages, oral traditions, and histories, countering Eurocentric narratives. Impact. Challenging Eurocentrism. By foregrounding literature from the Global South, this field challenges Western-centric models of literary analysis and interpretation. Influence on Global Discourse. It contributes to discussions about globalization, neoliberalism, environmentalism, and justice, highlighting the interconnectedness of the global south with global power structures. Social and political awareness. Many global south writers bring attention to social injustices, inequality, and the experiences of marginalized peoples, encouraging activism and awareness. New literary forms. The blending of traditional storytelling with modern forms, like magical realism, has influenced contemporary literary styles across the globe. Conclusion Global South studies in English literature enriches the field by offering diverse perspectives on colonization, cultural identity, globalization, and resistance. It challenges the dominance of Western narratives, promoting a more inclusive understanding of global literary production. By studying texts from the Global South, scholars and readers gain insight into the complexities of history, politics, and culture from a non-Western viewpoint, fostering cross-cultural understanding and decolonizing the literary canon. Timelines of Global South Studies in English Literature To understand the evolution of Global South Studies in English Literature, it is essential to explore the significant movements, key texts, and developments in detail. Here is a breakdown of the timeline with examples. 1. Early Colonial and Pre-Colonial Literature, 1500s-1800s Context. European colonization began in the 15th century, expanding into Africa, Asia, and the Americas. During this period, literature from the Global South was largely oral, with rich traditions of storytelling, myths, and epics. European colonizers, missionaries, and travelers wrote about the Global South in often biased, Eurocentric accounts. Key Events 
European empires colonizing vast regions of Africa, Asia, and the Americas, often producing literature that justified or reflected the colonial mission. Example text. Robinson Crusoe, by Daniel Defoe, 1719, though a Western text, it reflects early encounters with colonial themes, as Crusoe dominates, savage, lands, which is a reflection of European colonial ideologies. Impact. Colonial literature often exoticized or dehumanized people from the global south. However, indigenous oral traditions continued to thrive, laying the groundwork for later written texts after decolonization. 2. Postcolonial Literature and Decolonization, 1940s-1960s Context. After World War II, many countries in Africa, Asia, and the Caribbean achieved independence from European powers. This period saw the rise of postcolonial literature, where writers from newly independent countries started reclaiming their voices and histories. Key events. Independence of India, 1947, African decolonization, 1950s, 1960s, Cuban Revolution, 1959. Emergence of postcolonial literary criticism focusing on the effects of colonization on identity, culture, and politics. Pioneering figures. Chinua Achebe, Nigeria, Ngugi Wa Tiongo, Kenya, Salman Rushdie, India, Tayeb Salat, Sudan. Example texts. Things Fall Apart, by Chinua Achebe, 1958, Achebe's novel critiques the destructive impact of British colonization on Igbo society in Nigeria. Season of Migration to the North, by Tayeb Salat, 1966, this Sudanese novel addresses the psychological consequences of colonization, focusing on Amman's dislocation between the North Britain and South Sudan. Impact Literature from this period reflects the struggle for independence, identity formation, and cultural preservation. It marks the beginning of literary voices from the global south reclaiming their own narratives, often highlighting the trauma and consequences of colonization. 3. The Rise of Postcolonial Studies, 1970s-1990s Context The 1970s saw the development of postcolonial theory, which became a dominant academic framework for analyzing literature from the global south. Scholars like Edward Said, Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak, and Homi K. Baba offered critical perspectives on colonialism and its aftermath. Key events. Edward Said's Orientalism, 1978, launched postcolonial criticism, examining how the West constructed the Orient as inferior and exotic. Publication of major postcolonial novels from African, Asian, and Caribbean authors. Pioneering figures. Edward Said, Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak, Homi K. Baba, Salman Rushdie, V.S. Naipaul, Derek Walcott, Jamaica Kincaid. Example texts. Midnight's Children, by Salman Rushdie, 1981, explores post-independence India's political and cultural upheavals through magical realism. The Inheritance of Loss by Kiran Desai, 2006, examines issues of migration, globalization, and identity in post-colonial India. Impact. Post-colonial studies became a prominent part of literary theory, with scholars critiquing how Western literature constructed the Global South. Authors from the Global South used English to express their unique cultural experiences, combining traditional storytelling with modern forms. Emergence of Global South Studies 1990s present. Context. While postcolonialism remains influential, the concept of the Global South emerged to highlight a broader range of issues, including globalization, neoliberalism, migration, and environmental justice. It moves beyond the colonial postcolonial binary to address contemporary challenges faced by marginalized regions in a globalized world. Key events Globalization and its impact on the Global South, 1990s. Migration crises, climate change affecting southern countries disproportionately, and cultural hybridization. Pioneering figures. Arundhati Roy, India, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, Nigeria, Ben Okri, Nigeria, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Colombia. Example texts. The God of Small Things, by Arundhati Roy, 1997, deals with caste, gender, and postcolonial Indian identity. Half of a Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, 2006, a novel set during the Nigerian Civil War, exploring post-colonial identity, conflict, and cultural legacy. 100 Years of Solitude, by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, 1967, a magical realist masterpiece exploring Latin American history and post-colonial struggles. Impact. 
Globalization. Writers engage with the impacts of global capitalism, migration, and cultural exchange. Literature reflects the challenges of belonging, displacement, and identity in an increasingly interconnected world. Environmentalism. Many Global South writers address issues of environmental justice, critiquing how Western-driven climate change disproportionately affects their regions. Diverse forms of expression. Global South literature includes hybrid forms of storytelling, blending traditional folklore with modern techniques like magical realism. 5. Current Developments and Future Directions 2000s Present Context The 21st century sees increased attention to intersectionality in Global South literature, with a focus on gender, race, sexuality, and the environment. Themes of migration, refugee crises, and climate justice have taken center stage, particularly with writers examining the ongoing exploitation of the Global South by the Global North. Key Events Climate change debates and activism 2000s present with Global South countries advocating for climate justice. The refugee crisis and global migration issues. Pioneering figures. No Violet Bulawayo, Zimbabwe, Mohsen Hamid, Pakistan, Elif Shafak, Turkey, Amitav Ghosh, India. Example texts. The Shadow Lines by Amitav Ghosh 1988, a novel that deals with partition, migration, and nationalism in India. Exit West by Mohsen Hamid 2017, a contemporary novel that tackles migration, love, and the refugee crisis through a magical realist lens. Impact Globalization and migration Literature now often reflects the realities of migration, displacement, and identity crisis, particularly for individuals from the global south living in the global north. Climate justice Writers like Amitav Ghosh are increasingly addressing environmental degradation, global warming, and the disproportionate impact of climate change on vulnerable populations in the global south. Diverse voices. Current literature amplifies marginalized voices, including indigenous, LGBTQ+, and feminist perspectives, offering a more intersectional view of global south experiences. Conclusion in English literature highlights the journey from early colonial representations of the global south to contemporary works that foreground marginalized voices and complex post-colonial realities. Writers from the global south have used English literature to challenge imperial narratives, resist cultural domination, and engage with global issues like migration and environmental justice. As the field evolves, it continues to impact how literature is studied and understood, promoting a more inclusive and diverse global literary landscape. Significance, Relevance, Contribution, and Future of Global South Studies in English Literature 1. Significance of Global South Studies in English Literature Decolonizing Knowledge Global South Studies plays a vital role in decolonizing literary canons by challenging Eurocentric perspectives that have historically dominated English literature. It shifts the focus to the voices, histories, and experiences of formerly colonized or marginalized regions. Reclaiming Narratives it provides a platform for authors from Africa, Asia, Latin America, and other regions to reclaim their narratives, which were often distorted or silenced under colonial rule. This is essential for preserving cultural identities and addressing historical injustices. Cultural exchange and hybridity. Global South literature introduces readers to diverse storytelling traditions, languages, and hybrid forms that enrich global literary discourse. By blending oral traditions, folklore, magical realism, and modern techniques, it enhances the diversity of literary forms. Globalized world. In a globalized world, the literature of the global south bridges cultural gaps, allowing readers from the global north to understand the complexities of life in regions impacted by colonization, globalization, and neoliberalism. It promotes empathy, awareness, and intercultural dialogue. 2. Relevance of Global South Studies in Contemporary Contexts Postcolonial Realities The relevance of Global South Studies lies in its engagement with postcolonial realities, such as the lingering effects of colonization on identity, politics, and culture. It remains crucial in understanding contemporary issues like poverty, inequality, migration, and cultural displacement in postcolonial societies. Global Challenges Migration and Displacement the Global South has been disproportionately affected by wars, climate change, and economic crises, leading to significant migration and displacement. Literature from this region reflects these struggles and offers critical insights into the experiences of refugees, migrants, and exiles. Environmental justice. 
As climate change impacts the global south more severely than the global north, authors from these regions highlight issues of environmental degradation, resource exploitation, and the fight for climate justice. Intersectionality Contemporary Global South literature explores the intersections of race, gender, class, and sexuality, offering a richer, more complex analysis of social issues. Authors such as Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and Arundhati Roy tackle these multifaceted realities. Global Literature and Scholarship English literature is no longer confined to Britain and America but is a global phenomenon. Global South Studies is relevant in providing critical frameworks to understand the contributions of African, Asian, Caribbean, and Latin American writers who are shaping contemporary global literary trends. 3. Contributions of Global South Studies to English Literature Diversifying the canon, Global South Studies has expanded the literary canon to include a wider range of voices, particularly from regions previously overlooked or marginalized. This has enriched the study of English literature with diverse perspectives and traditions. Challenging Dominant Discourses The field challenges dominant discourses about history, identity, and power, allowing for more nuanced critiques of imperialism, racism, and cultural hegemony. Works like Edward Said's, Orientalism, or Gayatri Chakravorty Spivak's writings have deeply influenced how literature is analyzed today. Innovative Literary Forms Authors from the Global South have pioneered innovative literary forms, such as magical realism, and have reinterpreted Western literary genres. For instance, Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude fused local myths with modernist techniques, contributing to global literary innovation. Promoting Global Awareness Global South literature fosters awareness of global issues such as economic inequality, neocolonialism, and human rights abuses. Through works like Ngugi Wa Tiongo's Decolonizing the Mind, readers are prompted to rethink language politics and cultural imperialism. The Future of Global South Studies in English Literature Emerging Voices and Issues New generations of writers from the Global South are addressing contemporary issues like technology, global capitalism, and climate change. Writers such as Mohsen Hamid and No Violet Bulawayo are expanding the scope of Global South literature to reflect modern experiences of diaspora, transnationalism, and identity. Digital Globalization With the rise of digital technologies, Global South literature is gaining wider access through digital publishing, social media, and e-literature. This democratization of storytelling will likely lead to even more diverse and experimental forms of literature. Interdisciplinary Connections The future of Global South studies in English literature lies in its increasing interdisciplinarity, linking literature with sociology, anthropology, environmental studies, and political science. This offers deeper insights into global issues like climate crisis, migration, and cultural hybridization. Climate Fiction and Environmental Justice as climate change becomes a pressing concern, the future of Global South literature may focus more on environmental justice, with writers addressing the ecological consequences of exploitation and resource extraction in the Global South. Amitav Ghosh's The Great Derangement signals this shift. Greater Academic Integration As universities continue to globalize, Global South studies will become more integrated into English literature curricula, moving beyond its niche status to become a core component of literary studies. This will promote a broader understanding of global issues and their literary representations. Conclusion Global South studies in English literature is not only significant for decolonizing the literary canon and reclaiming silenced narratives, but it also remains relevant in addressing the contemporary issues that define our globalized world. Its contributions in diversifying literary forms, challenging dominant discourses, and promoting global awareness are critical in shaping the future of English literature. As we move forward, Global South Studies will continue to influence literary scholarship by highlighting the voices of those impacted by postcolonial realities, environmental crises, and global migration, making it indispensable to the future of literary studies. The term, Global South, refers to a collective group of countries and regions that were historically colonized and are often situated in the Southern Hemisphere. It is used to denote countries that have been marginalized or disadvantaged in the global economic and political system. Compared to the more affluent and industrialized countries, which are often referred to as the global north. Here's why the term is used and its implications. Reasons for the term, global south. Historical context. Colonial legacy. 
Many countries in the global south were subjected to European colonization, which had profound and lasting impacts on their economies, societies, and cultures. The term reflects the historical experience of exploitation and subjugation. Postcolonial identity. After achieving independence, these countries continued to face challenges stemming from their colonial past, including economic disparities and cultural dislocation. Economic disparities. Development levels. The global south generally includes nations with lower levels of industrialization, lower income levels, and less economic development compared to the global north. This economic divide is a key factor in the terminology. Global inequality. The term highlights the socio-economic inequalities that exist on a global scale, drawing attention to the imbalances in wealth, resources, and power. Geographical connotations. Southern Hemisphere, while not all countries in the global south are. Located in the Southern Hemisphere, e.g., India, Mexico, the term broadly associates these nations with the global south due to historical and economic reasons. Imagery and Symbolism. The South often symbolizes the marginalized or less developed areas, while the North symbolizes wealth and power. This geographical metaphor emphasizes the division between the developed and developing worlds. Political and cultural dimensions. Global power dynamics. The term also reflects the power dynamics in global politics, where countries in the global South have historically been less influential in shaping international policies compared to those in the global North. Cultural contributions. The Global South is rich in cultural diversity and traditions that have been historically undervalued or overlooked. The term underscores the need to recognize and value these contributions. Emergence of Global South Studies Scholarly focus. The term has become integral to academic disciplines like Global South Studies, which aim to explore and address the unique experiences, challenges, and contributions of these regions. It provides a framework for analyzing how historical, economic, and political factors shape the Global South's role in global affairs. Implications of the term Critique of neocolonialism The term is often used to critique ongoing neocolonial practices where economic and political exploitation continues in subtle forms. It emphasizes the need to address these inequities and work towards global justice. Focus on equity and development. Using the term encourages discussions about development policies, economic aid, and international cooperation that aim to reduce disparities and support sustainable development in these regions. Cultural revaluation. It also advocates for a revaluation of cultural contributions from the global south, recognizing their impact on global literature, art, and intellectual thought. Conclusion. The term, global south, encapsulates a complex set of historical, economic, and geopolitical factors. It is used to denote regions that have been historically marginalized and continue to face significant challenges in the global system. Its use underscores the need for greater equity, recognition, and support for the countries and cultures that fall under this designation. The terms, Global South, and Global North, are part of a broader framework used to describe global economic and political dynamics, but there are other terms and concepts that provide additional context or nuance. Here are the terms and concepts used to describe global regions and their dynamics. 1. Global North Definition refers to the wealthier, more developed countries, often located in the Northern Hemisphere. This term encompasses countries... Levels of industrialization, economic development, and higher standards of living. United States, Canada, Western European countries, e.g., Germany, France, and Australia. Characteristics. High income economies, advanced infrastructure, significant political and economic influence. Global East. Definition. This term is sometimes used to describe countries in the Eastern Hemisphere, particularly in reference to regions in Asia that are economic. It includes both developed and developing nations. Examples. China, Japan, South Korea, India. Characteristics. Includes a mix of high income and rapidly developing economies, with significant global economic influence, especially in technology and manufacturing. 3. Global West. Definition. Often used interchangeably with the term, Global North, it typically refers to Western countries with high economic development and influence. Examples, United States, Western European countries, Canada. Characteristics, advanced economies, significant cultural and political influence, historical colonial power.
4. Global East-West Divide Definition refers to the geopolitical and economic divisions between the eastern and western parts of the world. Historically, this division was prominent during the Cold War era, with the east represented by the Soviet bloc and the west by NATO countries. Examples The Cold War divide between the eastern bloc, Soviet Union, Eastern Europe and the western bloc, United States, Western Europe. Characteristics Reflects ideological, political, and economic differences that have shaped global relations. 5. Developing countries Definition A term used to describe countries that are in the process of industrialization and economic development but are not yet considered fully developed. Examples Many countries in Africa, parts of Latin America, and some in Asia. Characteristics Lower income levels, emerging economies, often facing challenges such as poverty, lack of infrastructure, and political instability. 6. Emerging markets Definition Refers to countries that are experiencing rapid economic growth and development and are transitioning from low income to middle income status. Examples Brazil, India, China, South Africa. Characteristics High growth potential, increasing integration into the global economy, often characterized by significant investment opportunities and risks. 7. Least developed countries LDCs. Definition a category defined by the United Nations for countries with the lowest indicators of socioeconomic development, including low income, weak human assets, and economic vulnerability. Examples Afghanistan, Haiti, Mozambique, Ethiopia. Characteristics Extreme poverty, limited access to education and healthcare, high vulnerability to economic and environmental shocks. 8. Global South versus Global North Debate. Context the distinction between Global South and Global North is not just geographic but also socio-economic and political. It emphasizes global inequalities and historical contexts of power and wealth. Contemporary relevance. The terms help in analyzing global issues such as climate change, trade policies, and geopolitical power, focusing on the disparities and interactions between more and less developed regions. Conclusion. These terms provide a framework for understanding global dynamics and regional characteristics. While Global South and Global North highlight economic and historical inequalities, other terms like Global East-West, Emerging Markets, and Least Developed Countries offer additional insights into the diverse experiences and conditions of countries around the world. Understanding these terms helps in analyzing global issues, policies, and interactions from multiple perspectives.